everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am continuing my series in traditional publishing basics and submission. And finally, we get to talk about submission. And this is a miracle because submission, you see, is like Fight Club. And what is the first rule of Fight Club? Well, we don't talk about Fight Club. This is my super old and tired joke, but it's true. Submission is a very taboo subject. Authors are told not to talk about it. Now, if you watched my how to deal with rejection video, I had to think about that, that one. If you watched that video, I talked about when you get rejected and you have feelings that you should get those feelings out, but that you should vent in private always that part of just, you know, being a professional writer, human person is not to air dirty laundry and get angry in a public space. That means you don't tweet about it. You don't do blog posts. You definitely never name names and point fingers. We're creative people and we get hurt really easily. And submission is, Ugh. It's an emotional time. And what is submission? I haven't even said that. Submission is when your agent sends your book to editors to pitch them, get them to read it, and get them to buy it. It can be a very, it can be a long process. It can be an emotionally fraught process because you've gotten that far you've gotten over the hurdle and you have an agent and you're feeling, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. You're feeling hopeful. You're feeling hopeful. And I think that's where the big feelings come from. You're, it's like, you're so close to the, to the finish line or what you think is the finish line. Cause the thing is it doesn't end when you get a book deal. There's always more hurdles to jump over, but I mean, just getting an agent and getting a book deal, that is like getting to the Olympics. Then you have to compete in the Olympics. And so that's like the next set of hurdles, but so when submission doesn't go well, it's just, it's emotional. And when you're in submission and you're in the limbo of like what's happening and what's going on, it is, yeah. I mean, I think my inability to speak about it tells you a lot about submission. And I've been on submission a couple of times. I have, I've been through that. And actually the video after this one is secrets of submission survival. And it's going to be the practical video where I tell you like, well, how the heck do you get through submission without going crazy? But this is the what is submission video. So I told you what submission is. So how does submission actually work? Um, so it varies by agent, like different agents have different styles, but generally speaking, your agent is going to pitch editors. Some agents pitch on the phone, some agents pitch in person, especially, you know, if they live in New York and they're having lunch with editors and then other agents send an email and the email will have a pitch letter that is a lot like a query letter. It's almost exactly like a query letter, except mostly like kind of how it starts out. Cause the, the agent will like kind of say like, I am pleased to present or, you know, whatever it is they're going to say. Um, and of course, even when agents are pitching an editor on the phone or in person, when they send the submission package, there's going to be a pitch letter there. So there is a pitch letter. Um, I will tell you that in my case, uh, my agent used a nice chunk of what I had queried her with, like the body paragraph of her pitch was the same as my query. So if you do write a very compelling query, your agent may use that for their pitch. Writing a good query is really important for a lot of different reasons. So if they pitch the editor, then the editor will request the full, request to ask the full. They may ask for it on the phone or in that in-person meeting as well. Um, and then you wait, you wait. <laughs> uh, but before we get to waiting, agents will do this in what are called rounds, submission rounds. And there are different schools of thoughts and ways to do this, but I'm going to tell you how I am most familiar with it for YA. I have heard it can vary for genres, but for YA, uh, agents typically are going to start with a small to medium round. Some agents do like to do big rounds and that's fine too, but a small round would be like four to six editors or less than four. A mid-sized round would be like seven to 15 and they compile a list. And I mentioned this in my, how I got a book deal video that at least the way that my agent does it, you know, an agent will have a one, two, and three list where it's a mix of editors from a kind of variety of levels of publications, you know, all good publishers that you might want to be published by, but an agent will always kind of want to hold back some editors who 
you know, are really fantastic. Uh, because if you go out with a second and third round of sub, you always want to make sure you have a strong crop of editors on every list. And it's not an A, B, and a C list. Because, you know, you don't want to insult an editor that they're on the C list. And why would you want to work with an editor on the C list? So the list should be kind of equal in terms of the mix of the editors on it. Now, the big reason for doing small to mid-sized rounds is so... In the event that you are facing all no's from your round, all rejection, that you can take feedback that would come in those rejections and use them to revise your novel between rounds. I will tell you, I know so many success stories where a book did not sell on the first round of sub or even the second round of sub and then an author revised and then they got a book deal. That's my story. It's also happened to many personal friends of mine. Not doing well in round one is not the end of the world. And that's the good thing. You have that chance to try again and go back out to some more fantastic editors. Now, there's a stylistic thing with agents. Some agents will give you the complete submission list. It will have the publishing houses, the imprint at those publishing houses, or a list of imprints, the and the editors that you are being sent to. Other agents will only tell you the imprints or the publishers. They do not share the list of names of the actual editors who are receiving your book. Agents have a variety of reasons for this. Um, in some cases, it's that they had a client at one point who, you know, did the bad thing and inappropriately internet stalked some editors. Don't do that. Um, it may just be that they don't want to get an author's hopes up that, oh, XYZ editor is reading it. Um, they all have their different reasons, and you as the author, you can have your preference of how transparent you want your agent to be in this process. Full disclosure, I like to know absolutely freaking everything. I want to know who the editors are, partly because I am very familiar kind of with the imprints and who people are. Like, you talk to friends and you know, oh, so-and-so editor is really amazing to work with, but I have feelings about the uh, this other editor that maybe they're not ideal for me. If you don't have those sorts of opinions, you might not need to know. But I do like to know everything, because, yeah. <laughs> this is why I advise that when you get an offer call and you're talking to an agent that you ask about their submission style. Just make sure that it jibes with your preferences. Speaking of your preferences, you get to work out with your agent how you want to handle responses from editors. Do you want to receive the rejections as they come in? Your agent will either forward you the email or copy and paste the rejection and send it in an email to you. Or do you want to pick uh, a day of the week or the month? So maybe it's every other Friday or the first Friday of every month when your agent sends you all of the rejections that you've received in that time so that there's like a day and a time. I just picked Friday because why not? You could pick whatever day you want where you can emotionally prepare yourself for reading the rejections, the responses. Because if you get a positive response, your agent's always going to call you right away. Uh, what you need to develop a strategy for is how you want to handle rejections. You may also choose not to receive them. You can tell your agent, I only want you to contact me if you hear good news. And that works for a lot of people, though I will say I've heard that strategy mostly used by people who are in a second or a third round where it's just they've gone through the steps and they've faced so much disappointment that they only want to hear if it's good news. Um, I per personally feel that not hearing anything is really maddening. I would rather hear a no, hear some kind of update than hear nothing. So. That's my, that's my preference, but there's kind of that in-between of like, agent, you know, just tell me they said no, but don't tell me what they said. Or tell me what they said, but only on this day of the week. Or in my case, like, give it to me straight. I want it straight, and I want it when it comes in. Um, I, I don't think I'm a masochist. I just, I, I process, processing rejection, like, I don't know, it helps me. It's, it's a part of my emotional process. Now I want to talk about submission seasons, because once you get a little bit entrenched in the YA community, you're going to hear scuttlebutt about when is the best time to go on submission. And there are times that are considered slightly better, but kind of like querying, there's almost no bad time to query and or go on submission. Not really. You can technically go out anytime, but I'm going to tell you about the key seasons to know. 
So the two best seasons in which to go on submission are spring. So that's going to be later in January, not the 1st of January, because people are still recovering for the holidays. So like later in January, February, kind of into March, and fall, which is September, October, maybe scooching into November. And this, this is just like weird publishing magic stuff. It's like random stuff. These just happen to be times when editors, they they're keen to acquire. They are in that mindset to acquire. Conferences aren't happening. You know, everyone's in the office because vacation season is over. And also I've noticed with like the deadlines that writers themselves who already are in contract get that you don't often have a deadline that's in September, October, or January, February, March. I've actually noticed a lot of us have deadlines in the summer. Summer is a hot time for, you know, tight publishing deadlines. So fall and spring are just like good times to go on submission. But that doesn't mean you can't go on submission other times. Um, I've definitely heard about late spring, early summer submission. But you may have heard that summer is a terrible time to go on submission because publishing goes on vacation. This is kind of true. In the summer, first of all, publishing has summer Fridays. And so every Friday, publishing's piecing out at like 2 p.m. And that means their other days are more packed and Fridays are kind of loosey-goosey. Summer Fridays and vacation schedules in the summer definitely impact submission. But I also, of course, know tons of people who went on submission in the summer and sold in the summer. It just took a little bit longer. Might take an extra week or two to make sure that everyone who needs to be there to make an acquisitions decision is there and so on. But summer's not that bad. I will say generally agents try not to send you out on submission in like end of April, May, just because this is like the bulk of publishing conference season, especially BEA. So you generally don't want to go out when everyone's going to be out of the office because they're at professional conferences. So that's why kind of you, there's like a little pocket there where your agent might wait a month to send you out if you're kind of in that window. And then that brings us to winter. Um, you know, you'd think don't go on submission in winter, like around Thanksgiving and, and winter holidays, but, and yet there are exceptions to everything. Um, I know people who went on submission right after Thanksgiving at the beginning of December and they had book deals before Christmas. So there's really no bad time, but what you need to know in terms of seasons, especially if you are if you're deadline oriented and you're thinking, when do I want to like finish this book so that I can query and like get an agent at a good time and maybe go on submission for XYZ season, you're gonna think about fall and spring. I'll admit that I definitely had that in mind when I was drafting and finishing my book. I knew I wanted to query in the spring with the hopes of going on submission in the fall and that is what ended up Happening. So that's kind of the skinny on publishing seasons for submission. There's a whole other topic of publishing seasons for like actually being published for like your book coming out and I will definitely be doing a video on that. So now on to how long does submission take? It can take 24 hours. It can take two weeks. It can take eight weeks. It can take four months six months, a year, a year and a half. I've even heard of cases where like two years later someone gets a book deal. I will say typically once you get past the one year mark, the odds are much, much, much lower that you were going to sell your book. And that's when you should kind of start going through the stages of um, grief to kind of, you know, prepare yourself for your book being shelved after not working on sub. But I'm gonna talk a bit about kind of the, the typical, not typical first year windows. First of all, those 24 hour book deals and even those two week book deals are unicorns. They're really not that common, but they do happen. So the thing is when you hear people talk about submission and getting their book deal so often, so often guys, the people who publicize their submission experiences and their book deal experiences the most and the loudest, not because like they're being malicious, but because they're happy and it's really cool to talk about are, it always seems to be the ones who sold practically overnight. 
And I'll, I'll tell you, before I went on submission and when I hadn't talked to quite as many authors, I certainly was like, okay, if I don't sell in the first two weeks, I'm doomed. And I didn't sell. I was not a fast sale. I, You always want to be the exception, but most of us are not the exception. And yet, of course, I, I do know people who are the exception. And it's like, but yeah, um, generally speaking, the hot time to sell is going to be the first eight to 12 weeks that you are on submission. Hot in the sense that if an editor is really excited about your book, they're probably going to read it right away. Editors will drop everything to read a book that they really want to read. So when you're on submission and you kind of pass the eight week to 12 week mark and you don't have interest or a sale, you still might sell. But that is when personally, I started long game planning in both cases. In the case of my first book, that was kind of the long process of that book didn't sell at all. In the case of Brightly Burning, um, I started to try to emotionally prepare myself at eight to 12 weeks, or at least, you know, kind of prepared myself for you're not the unicorn story. But part of preparing myself was also coming up with a game plan and that included revising between rounds. So just when you hit that kind of eight to 12 week mark, it's kind of just deep breaths. Exception, if you went out in the summer, um, the eight to 12 week mark doesn't really work for you because summers are slow. Um, but when you hit six months, if we're talking about like one round of submission or if you're like through with the second round, yeah, <laughs> I said a year and I meant a year. When you hit a year, that's when you really do have to start kind of like submission is not going well if it's been a year. There are exceptions, but I'm all about real talk on this channel. I <laughs> breaking hearts and crushing dreams. And you know, I know that there are going to be people who disagree with me and, and including agents who'd be like, oh, well, blah, 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 that's sold. And my own beloved agent, this is one of the reasons I love her. She had a client and she worked for over two years to sell his book and she stuck it out and she sold it. And I'm so proud of her. And those are the stories that you do want to hear. But realistically from the author side, when you surpass a year, you have to start thinking about what comes next. And this is why it's so important when you're on submission to work on another project. You should always be looking forward and working on something new in the event that submission doesn't go well. And this all said, I do want to give a caveat to the timing countdown clock thing. And I mentioned this in my How I Got a Book Deal video as well. The beautiful thing about multiple rounds of submission is that when you go out on submission on a new round, it's almost like your time starts over. So I actually had a fast sale relative to my round. Uh, I got a, an offer four weeks after going out on submission for the second time. It was seven months into my submission journey from the start of round one to when it sold. But it kind of depends on like what you consider in terms of being a fast sale. So every time you go out on a new round of submission, like you're allowed to be a bit hopeful and the countdown clock does kind of start again. But at a certain point, if you've been out to a lot of editors and a lot of publishers and you're just not getting the feedback that you want and you're not getting an offer, there's always that point and it's different for all of us. And I can't give you a magic, I can't give you a magic number of months or editors or rounds for when you should start, you know, moving on from a book. But I know that for me, it's a year. And for me, it's more than 25 editors. So that's just kind of my own personal barometer. So the answer to how long does the mission take is, I don't know. Um, always plan emotionally though for not being a fast sale. You will, you will cope with submission better if you set your expectations to super realistic. And then if you are like a unicorn, practically overnight sale, like pop a bottle of champagne, that's cool, celebrate. Now in the spirit of real talk and ruining dreams, I would like to make one point about submission. Now I mentioned that this, this uh, realistic fact is that some books are drop everything and read books for editors. Some books are going to sell fast just because they're a hot commodity and people really want to read them. 
part of this is your agent. Some agents are drop everything and read agents anytime they send a book to an editor. And this might not be all editors, this might be specific editors if an editor knows that their tastes really line up with that agent, they will drop everything to read. And that's why sometimes or often you will see certain agents seem to have really fast deals a lot. And not just fast deals, but big deals, money-wise. And this is because not all agents are created equal. There is There are differences in terms of agent caliber. And I just say this, and I've said this in other videos, to remind you that no agent is better than a bad agent or a mediocre agent. You should always put your best work out there. And I know it's hard, but don't be desperate. <laughs> like hold out for a good agent. <sighs> That's kind of a tangent to some submission, but I, I think it's worth saying because if you are watching this because you are on submission right now, or you're going on submission, or you've been on submission, and it hasn't gone well, or you're worried, it might not be you. It might not be your book. Oftentimes, this might be why a great book does take longer to sell. Maybe that agent just doesn't have the cachet with the editor to be a drop everything and read person, but your book is good and you will get read and things can go incredibly well and you can get an offer. Good books do stand on their own two feet. They will pop out of the submission pile that said, not if you're with a schmagen. Oh God, guys, I'm full of I'm full of bad news and contradictions. So I will leave it there because I would actually like to do a whole video on how a mediocre agent can damage your career. But with agents and submission, my final note is about communication and follow up the thing to know because submission can be very emotional and it, it can take a long time. Your agent should be following up pretty regularly with these editors. Now, they're not going to follow up every single week, but once you hit kind of a certain point, or what I consider the reasonable point of an editor reading your book, eight weeks, 12 weeks, your agent should be following up pretty regularly. Every agent's going to have a different barometer for what following up means and how they do those follow ups, whether it's over email or a phone call or being, hey, let's grab lunch and talk. But if you are with an agent and you are on submission and it has been forever and you haven't heard anything and you told your agent to send things to you, you might need to have a frank conversation with your agent. They should be following up. And when push comes to shove, they should be able to provide you with evidence that they have followed up with agents. If you're not hearing anything, your agent might not be doing their job. That said, there are editors who ghost agents. This is why publishing is so frustrating and it is complex. There are editors who are no response means no, which was not always the case, but I know that it is increasingly becoming a thing. But so in that case, talk to your agent. Like, have we not heard from them because you think they've ghosted us and like this is something that they do? Or have we not heard from them because my agent isn't following up? So that's always something that you should keep in mind. Now this video has turned out even more depressing than I anticipated and I had notes that I was going off. My message to you if you're watching this is submission is tough and we're not supposed to talk about it publicly and generally we don't. And I'm going to talk about this in my survival secrets video but I want to bookend it in here like include it here a little as well. Find friends. The key when you're on submission is to talk to people who are going through what you're going through or who have gone through what you are going through. Um, though the note there is don't only be friends with people who have sold in two weeks because it's not gonna make you feel better at all. But talk to people who are going through what you're going through. Have candid and private conversations. Comparing notes can be especially helpful in a situation where you're not sure uh, if your agent is doing what they're supposed to. You figure out the norms of submission by talking to other people, which is how I've, I have the norms of what happened to me, but I have the norms of what, ha, you know, what has happened to many people that I know, which is why I'm able to share some of this information with you. I will also say that this is what I consider the silver lining of submission, even the rejections that you get on submission. The beautiful thing about having an agent, a good agent and going on submission to editors is they read your book. 
real New York editors read your book. And I have found that even rejections from New York editors, they're specific, they're personal, and they're almost always kind. There generally aren't form rejections when you're on submission, unlike querying. And so it's that weird silver lining that like you're being read, someone is reading your words, and they're taking the time to let you know why it didn't work for them. So while it's disappointing to get a rejection when you're on submission, I personally take solace in that kind of personal touch and knowing that you're so close. You're so close. And it can take a couple rounds of submission. It can take submitting a couple of different books. But if you've got an agent, you can get there. So that's my positive end note to the weird real talk, like dark rain cloud of depression video. So I hope this helped. I hope it was interesting. Um, let me know comments down below if you've had submission um, experiences that are um, kosher to talk about. You know, I can talk about submission with you in these videos because I, I, I try to be transparent but very careful. I, I'm not airing dirty laundry. I'm not giving you specifics and I'm not naming names. So, you know, drop down in the comments anything that you have to say about submission or any questions that you have. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I would appreciate it. You know, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And as always, everyone, happy writing.